All right. I was in here early. Tammy, what's up? Game of the Globe's in here also. Kevin Deal is in here. Club Mike V, thanks for showing up. Saw you guys in here real early. I think you're kind of crazy, but <laughs> I appreciate the excitement. Anyway, guys, I am back finally. I have put over 2,500 miles on my car in the last two weeks. Uh, we had a blast. Uh, I was up, obviously, up in uh, Wyoming for a little while. And then my wife flew up, and we basically just went to South Dakota, Wyoming, North Dakota, Minnesota. We just saw a bunch of states that we've never been to, and we had a blast. So anyway, I'm back home. I'm in the slot machine cave. As you can see, it is dark and dimmy and lots of slot machine parts everywhere. <laughs> the good stuff. So uh, my co-host, uh, Brantley, is not going to be with us today. As you probably saw, he has had to go pick up some horses <laughs> down in Phoenix, so he's not able to join the live stream today. Uh, but that's okay, because we're going to talk about home slot machine ownership today, and that's going to be the, the topic that we're going to we're gonna cover. So uh, let's. I have a bunch of resources for you guys, and let's just kind of jump in and go ahead and start asking your questions, because once I'm done with kind of the opening topic, I'll jump right into questions, and I'll do my best to answer. And if we need to end the show early, we will. Uh, so anyway... Um, Let's talk about home slot machine ownership. So a lot of people want to do it and they're not really sure, you know, how to do it. Um, is it, is it something they can do? Is it too much of an undertaking? Is it difficult? Um, is it hard to find replacement parts? Is it hard to find help? You know, all those kind of questions. Um, and I get those questions a lot because that's, that's mainly what the channel is about is, you know, home slot machine ownership and repairs and stuff. So, you know, that's, it, it's, it's a fair question and it's something that you can, should consider. So let me tell you about how I got into this. So I, and some of you may know this, but some of you may not. So about, I'd say five or six years ago, um, I always wanted to own my own slot machine. And Texas is a, is a good state to own uh, slot machines because there's no restrictions. Um, you know, that you can own any year, uh, make, model, whatever, a slot machine. And you can even accept cash and there's no limitations or laws. So uh, I was very lucky to be in this state to be able to do that. So my first machine was a triple diamond free games. If you are familiar with that in the S 2000 platform, that's like this, these right here, the old style. And uh, I liked it so much that I got a nine line uh, triple diamond also. So I had two machines and that's basically where I just started learning um, everything there is to know about slot machine ownership and how to do repairs because I made a lot of mistakes with those machines, believe it or not. I broke chips, I broke parts, and I started to realize it's very difficult sometimes to find those things. And so I was a little bit more careful going forward. And, uh, you know, it, people that know me know that I will take any kind of topic and just learn it until there's nothing else to be learned from it. And that's kind of what I've done with slot machines over the four, last four or five years and have really enjoyed it. And I enjoy helping you. Um, the main reason I started this channel is because of what I went through. Um, there is a lot of stuff online for slot machine repair and ownership. But it's very confusing and it's difficult to ask questions. People kind of jump all over you for asking dumb questions and things like that. And I just was getting very frustrated with it. So I was like, you know what? There's not a lot of YouTube videos of people showing how to repair machines and maintain them and, you know, play them off uh, inside of a home environment. So that's why I started the channel and look where we are today. So over 2.5 uh, K subscribers, which is fantastic. I'm really excited about that and we're continuing to grow. So uh, thank you all for all your support and everything uh, up to this point. So let's jump into uh, slot machine ownership. So number one, it is a great way to save money, right? Because <laughs> you can stay out of the casino. And uh, Gamble Globe already says he he wants a double top dollar machine because he'll stay out of the casino more. <laughs> and uh, there's there's the double top dollar right there. And no, I'm not selling that one. I'm keeping that one for now. <laughs> it's my favorite machine. It's good to be back. But yeah, it's, it's a great way to uh, be able to scratch that itch without having to spend any money. Um, and a lot of people, I mean, I've gotten some pretty interesting comments on my videos over the years. You know, uh, one of my most famous uh, videos uh, somebody posted, you know, this has to be the dumbest slot machine channel on earth. Why would you ever play at home? And I pinned it to the top of that video because I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, people like doing that. Why do you watch sports instead of play sports? You know, it's something that you enjoy doing. Um, I like playing the machines. I just don't like dumping money into them. <laughs> so, you know, this is kind of the best way to handle that, that situation. All right. So, let's talk about slot machine ownership. So there are some state laws, you know, based on the state that you live in. And I put a shortened link up here for you guys, and I'm about to go uh, share it so you can see it. But yes, 
Um, some states do not allow you to own slot machines at all. Um, some allow you to own them if they're a certain year old, um, you know, in age, and some have no restrictions whatsoever. Um, in my experience, uh, this, these laws are kind of like the dumb laws that have been around for a long time. Um, I have not read or heard of anybody getting in trouble for personal ownership of slot machines, even in the States that it's restricted. Um, but you should always follow the laws and rules. And if you do, um, end up purchasing a machine and it doesn't uh, comply with the state law, don't advertise that you own them and things like that. Just keep them in your house, have fun, and nobody will mess with you. <laughs> that's my that's my personal advice, but always, you know, follow the rules. You know, that's the best thing to do. Uh, so anyway, let's, let's take a look at this uh, real quick. And I'm not going to go through every state, but I want to show you kind of what uh, what it looks like. So let me share a screen and... Of course, I'm on a Mac, so I have to ask, uh, give it permission and all that kind of fun stuff. So we'll do that. And it's not liking it, so. All right. Sorry, guys. I... I have a new Mac here and it's, it's asking me to leave the site now. So we're not gonna be able to show you that. <laughs> anyway, just go to that link. And basically what it is, it's a Wikipedia article and you can search for on wiki for slot machine ownership or old slot machines. And you'll, it's basically a grid. That you can look it up by state and see if you're allowed to own a, a slot machine. So it's very, very simple. So the next thing is, is how expensive are slot machines? And it's a difficult question to answer because they're all over the map. You can get some that are very inexpensive and then you can get some that are ridic ridiculously expensive. Um, my personal recommendation is if it's your first slot machine to own, go with something a little bit cheaper and make sure it's something you want to invest in. Um, and that's what these are. They are investments. Uh, they hold their value really well, especially if you get one that people like. You know, top dollars are a perfect example of that. But even like the simple games like Double Diamond, Triple Diamond, those are classic machines and people love uh, love those machines and are willing to buy them later on. Most of the people that I've sold machines to have written me and told me that after they have sold them off because they wanted to get a new game, they basically got what they paid for them. Um, and that's that's fantastic. They are investments. You know, if you take good care of them and you don't let them the glass break and things like that, you can actually... Uh, even make money on some of them. Um, it's definitely possible, especially if you take the time to learn how they work and do your repairs yourself and things like that. So um, you can definitely uh, make some money off of these things while you play them. Hey, what other kind of machines can you do that? <laughs> Not many these days. And the second thing is, you know, pick a thing that you enjoy playing. Um, I always recommend if you're going to play for something at home, you should do something with a bonus or some kind because it's a lot more exciting than just double diamond or triple diamond because you just you're going to get burned out you know pretty quickly <laughs> in my opinion so get something with a bonus game or something fun or something that you remember playing in a casino and you really enjoyed it you know those are those are important ones uh, to look for so how do you find slot machines to buy that's the uh, that's the next question so figure out your budget um, I would bank on spending at least seven or eight hundred dollars. Um, and shipping is kind of high right now. That's the other thing to consider is that, you know, these things cannot be shipped in the post, <laughs> post office. Uh, they all require freight shipping and it's very costly and very expensive. Um, probably between $300 and $600 is about how much it is to ship a machine these days. It depends on the size and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, tack that on to whatever the purchase price is. And so you kind of, you're kind of getting into the thousand dollar range, but the thing to remember, and I, I just said this, but it's an investment. Just remember that um, you're not going to lose out if you take good care of it. Um, when you're bored of it, you can sell it to somebody else and they'll pay you that much for it. So, and it's very easy to ship these days too. So if you're worried about that, ask me, I'll tell you how to easily ship things without having to go through a lot of headache and trouble. So um, the second thing is, um, okay, you picked your budget about how much you want to spend. Where do you buy them from? So I full disclosure, I do sell machines, but I typically go for the rarer machines. And that means they're more expensive. Um, these top dollars range anywhere from 4,000 to $6,000 each, um, depending on the quality of it and how much I have to put into it. Cause some of these require a lot of work. This one's down right now because I've gutted it and <laughs> there's nothing left inside of it. Uh, I had to take everything out to get another one working uh, because these two are sold. I've got this one here. 
is sold. Um, and shout out to Tyler if he's out there. And then the Money Mad Martians back here is sold too. So I'm getting those ready because they're coming to pick it up next week. So anyway, where was I? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I do sell machines. Um, if you're looking for anything um, kind of rare and hard to find, um, I'm the person that could get it for you. Um, but just be ready to spend some money. And it's not because I'm gouging anybody on it. Um, in fact, I'm probably one of the cheapest person to sell these rare uh, type uh, machines than the others that are out there. Um, but it could be a waiting game and it is going to be costly. Just kind of keep that in mind. But if you're not willing to spend that kind of money, and I certainly understand because if it's your first slot machine, that's that's a big risk to take. And I understand that. So the next thing is to go to uh, Slot Machines Unlimited. Um, I know uh, Chris Day very well. I've bought machines from him in the past. Um, they provide full support and full warranty. Um, they have machines from $800 all the way up to $10,000 or plus uh, dollars, and they have a good selection to choose from. So they do have a website, slotmachinesunlimited.com, but he's actually more active on Facebook. So if you go on Facebook and search for Slot Machines Unlimited, um, you can find all the new machines that they got they uh, they have coming in, and he has a phone number that you can just text him and ask him whatever machine you're looking for, and I'm sure he can help you find it and give you a price and a quote and all that. And again, he he has a full support staff, and he can support. Um, I mean, I do my own support uh, for people that have purchased machines from me, but that's why I limit how many I sell because I need to be able to support everybody one on one. And that's important to me. So I am not ever going to grow faster or bigger than what I am right now. I kind of limit things to only three or four machines at a time that I'm selling where he has hundreds and hundreds of machines that he could sell you. So go check him out. It's a good, good place. So you found your machine. It's, it's home. You've hooked it up. It's working. Now what? Well, there are some things that you will run into and, you know, support is there until that time runs out and it will eventually run out. Um, although Chris is pretty good about that stuff and I'm good too. Um, I get a lot of questions in email guys, people asking them for help fixing machines. I do the best that I can. Um, again, I'm not charging for any of that service. I probably should, but I'm not. Um, and a lot of times there's only so much I can do unless I'm physically sitting at the machine, but uh, a lot of things are simple. So it doesn't hurt to ask. I'll do my best. If I can't help you, I'll tell you, I can't help you. And I'll send you some, uh, some, uh, instructions on how to go find some help. So, Let's say that you exhausted all that. Well, there's another site um, called newlifegames.com. It's a web forum. And I wish I could open it up to show you, I, but again, permission hell here from, the, from Mac. Um, but anyway, this is a great forum and it could be a little overwhelming at first when you first go there. Um, but basically you go to, it's a, it's a web forum, right? If you've ever done, done a forum before, it's like a bunch of just like discussion posts and things like that. It's not really a web page, um, but they have different categories. And so you can go through the forums list and pick the category that matches the style of machine that you have. So if you have say an IGT S2000, which is what I have all of these here are S2000s. If you have those, then you can go to that sub forum and at the very top, they have stickies of like commonly asked questions. And there's literally 50 or 60 different topics that are hyperlinked on things like how to change the battery, how to refill the ticket paper, how to change the volume, how to change the denomination, how to clear, how to reset. All those types of things are covered there and done very well. So if you are the kind of person that likes to do your own research, go nuts on that site because I learned a lot there and it's an invaluable resource so make sure you check that out now the next thing is is let's say that you figured out your problem you have a bulb that's out you have um ticket paper that you need to get more of um anything like that parts that's the next thing so i have another recommendation which is uh spinink.com i have purchased Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine how many shipments they have sent me. <laughs> they know me my name already. Um, I just email them now. I don't even order them from the site directly um, because I order so many parts from them. Um, but they are great. And they have, basically, they have it broken down by machine type. So you can go and select your machine type, like I said, IGTS 2000, like these. And you can go and find the parts that are compatible with that machine. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Um, my recommendation with them is because shipping can be a little high is to do, don't do multiple orders, but try to do one big order with all the stuff in it to save a lot on shipping. Um, so that is a great place to find parts and, um, 
that can be a challenge sometimes. And, you know, the parts that go bad, um, like, or bad or run out, like the ticket paper and the bulbs, those are plentiful. You're always going to be able to find those. The things that are becoming harder and harder to find are like the, the glass. So like these top dollar glass, you know, the, the filling that goes on the top. Um, if you crack that, you're, you're pretty much out of luck. It's very difficult to find a replacement. So always be careful with those very unique parts to your slot machine. You know, don't put it somewhere where it can get cracked or damaged. Um, other things that are coming hard to find are like the cash flow, which is the, the bill validator, which you put your bills in. Those are coming a little harder to find and can be a little pricey, but those are solid. Those, those stay working um, as long as you don't break them yourself. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's not easy to break them. So don't, don't worry too much about it. Again, these things are built pretty good. Um, they built them in a way that they didn't want slot technicians working on them, you know, every single day. Uh, they probably go through once a month and just do some cleaning and dusting and things like that. And that's all I re really need to do to keep these things working. Um, the next thing that I always recommend too is since I men mentioned dusting, these things will gather a lot of dust and they will get very dirty inside. It's like a computer that you have uh, sitting on the floor or somewhere near carpet. And maybe you have a cat or a dog or something like that. You know, the, the fans will start to get clogged up and that's not good. It generates heat. Um, it can cause sparks, fires, things like that. So um, go through and vacuum these things out, not with the power on, <laughs> but go through and vacuum these things out, um, you know, once a month or every two months or something like that to keep them nice and clean. And they will operate for a very long time. So so that's uh, that's basically um, kind of the full gambit of picking your budget, where to order the machine, uh, how to pick the machine that you want to buy, um, where to get information and, and help as well as uh, how to find parts. Um, the final thing is, well, what can you do once you have machines at home to kind of get things a little spicier? Because, you know, a lot of people will tell me and comment on my videos or whatever and say, it just seems so dumb. Why would you have your own slot machine? It makes no sense. Well, you can actually have some fun with it. And we've done it. And I did a live stream, I think about a month ago, uh, where we had a bunch of family over and we did a slot tournament. And basically everybody started with the same amount of cash and uh, we have the tickets in and tickets out and you just rotate around the machines every 10 minutes and whoever had the most credits and money at the end won. And we basically had a prize where everybody put $20 in and whoever won got the, got the, the, the pot. And uh, we just had a blast and we're going to start doing that probably once a month now, or at least we're trying to, <laughs> uh, it's a little messy in here right now, but <laughs> we are having a party on Saturday. So I do have to get this cleaned up a little bit, but. Anyway, I digress on that. But, you know, it's slot machine ownership is a lot of fun. Um, I think it's it, it keeps me from spending money on machines in the casino because I like I love the slot machines. I love the music. I love um, the lights, everything about them. Um, I've always been, you know, really happy to play them. Um, but, you know, I'd rather just play them at home <laughs> with the game, a baseball game on or something and just have some fun. So. That's kind of what I do. And uh, so hopefully you guys, um, if you are interested in um, owning your own slot machine, uh, take my advice and go to those links. Um, I will put them after this live stream is over. I'll put them in the description so you guys can just click on them and go directly to those sites. Um, if all of that is still overwhelming, uh, please feel free to just email me. Um, again, my inbox is just crazy busy these days and it is you know the faster we grow on this channel it's gonna it's gonna continue that way but i'm gonna try to help everybody as long as i can but you know it's there's only so much i can do and i really only deal with the channel and stuff like that in the evenings um because i do have a full-time job and that keeps me busy during the day so i may not answer you until the evening times or the weekends so just keep that in mind um if you do contact me so all right so we were that's kind of my spiel. That's what I wanted to talk about is about 20 minutes. So um, let's uh, let me go to the comments here and let's look for look for some questions and uh, see what we got. Um, so, again, thank you, everybody, for joining. I really appreciate it. Sorry that uh, Cowboy Slots uh, wasn't able to join today, but we will definitely be on his channel on Sunday, uh, normal time. And uh, he is celebrating 40,000 subscribers. I just, I can't believe it. I'm so exciting. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we were able to partner up. Um, the live streams are going really well. We get a lot of questions. So, all right. All right. So let's go to the, go to the comments here and let's see what's going on. 
and gamble the globe yeah don't forget uh october 12th many uh, slot channels are coming out for meet and greet in vegas that is g2e um that is the first time i'm going to g2e so very exciting uh there will be a ton of us out there so should be a lot of fun and and mike says in regards to the topic of the stream if i was settled in my own place in a different state i would definitely consider owning my own machine yep i totally get that um and if you're ever interested let me know and i'll help you get started for sure and uh, I think a game king is a good, good way to start. I know you're a poker guy. Um, you'll definitely get a kick out of that. Uh, but don't, don't, uh, I would actually look at a G20 or a G23. These are uh, IGTs. Um, I've got one, but it's kind of messy right now, so I can't really show you. It's this one right here. Um, you can actually loan ga load game king software on top of all the other slot games that you have loaded on there. Uh, so you can have all the poker, uh, blackjack, roulette, um, all of those on there at the same time as you have the slot games, like double diamond, things like that. So it's kind of fun. And hey, Tammy, I appreciate you being here. All right. Now I'm starting to get to the question. Questions, questions, questions. Yeah, we did need the vacation. Uh, she started school on Monday um, or Tuesday, and uh, <laughs> this was kind of our last hurrah before she got uh, got into into uh, education mode. She is a teacher, so we we had a blast. And Rick James says, uh, "Double edged sword saves more, but costs to be able to own and or fix." It does, but it's not as costly as you think. Um, and I know you have your own machines too, so you understand it. <laughs> and I know the ones that you buy are, are kind of up there too in price. But again, they're investments. Um, think of it that way. Um, I, I think taking your money into a casino is not really an investment like these things are. Uh, that's most likely a, a D investment. <laughs> um, but these will hold their value well, especially if you're, you know, if you can fix them yourself and learn learn the trade a little bit. So. All right, Deftones, good to see you. Uh, do you know the slots where if you get the arrow symbol, it heightens the lines? How do the RNG factor in payways on base games fluctuating so much? Um, I'm not sure what you mean about the arrow symbol. Um, yeah, if you could, um, if you could clarify that, I'll, I'll catch you in the comments a little bit later. I'm not sure what you mean by the arrow symbol heightening the lines. I think you might mean that, you know, certain bonuses or certain times you bet, you know, you have different pay lines instead of the fixed amount. Um, but I'm not really sure. And Rick J, anywhere from four hundred dollars to ten k. How they get even more than ten k? <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Uh, some of the uh, uh, fire links and lightning links can get very, very expensive. That's why I've never owned any of them because they're just, they're too expensive. So I have the diamond quarter machine. Some of the lights went off on it, but the bulbs are good. Uh, which lights? The ones behind the reels or um, I guess if it's a quarter machine, you probably have an S plus, which is the older models that take coins. Although S 2000s can take coins as well. It's a conversion you can do. Um, yeah, if the lights went out, definitely check the bulbs. Um, sometimes they, you might think the bulbs are good, but they're not. <laughs> I've had that issue before. Um, and always, um, if you, if they have incandescent bulbs in there, switch to the led bulbs and let me show you what I use. So I use these, uh, these are for the, uh, behind the reels. Um, but you can use them other locations in the slot machine also but i use these led bulbs and man they just make everything pop and they don't burn out uh, they will last for a very very long time they don't generate heat um, let me show you what happens to those what those incandescent bulbs do um, i have a perfect example here so i was working on uh one of the machines that i'm selling and they will actually burn out the the housing let me get it in the camera view. So see how the plastic is melted? Um, and these, these, are, these are the ones that I put in there, but they had incandescent bulbs in there before. And it basically starts to melt the housing. And it just it's those things generate so much heat and they burn out so easily. I do not use those anymore in any machine. I take them out and I put the LEDs in. 
So it's much, much better. So Tony F says, I bought a five reel IGT S2000 and it took two months to refurbish it. And now that it's crated, there are no delivery drivers available right now to get it to me. It's my first machine. Hope I get it. Huh? Um, where did you buy it from? There should be plenty of delivery drivers. I have absolutely no issue with delivery drivers right now. Now it was bad about six months ago, but now you should have absolutely no problem. So shoot me an email and I'll be able to help you. Homeslotsfun at gmail.com. All right. Next question. Muller Medic. The questions are getting so long. I have to like stand up here. So IGT S2000 machine is Tito required to accept vouchers. Uh, machine will print them, but will not accept states processing vouchers and spits it. Yeah. You have to have a Tito uh, module for it to read the vouchers. Um, every machine will print a ticket without having the Tito module inside of it. But in order to be able to accept them, yes, you will have to have a Tito. Um, and you do have to do a um, key, uh, a rekey, or sometimes a clear, but sometimes just a key um, in order to get the Tito to work. So make sure you have a, the set of those chips also. Um, and if you need advice on which Tito to get, I recommend the Tito at Home uh, 3. Um, very good device. Those are the ones that I buy. And Mark may not be the cheapest, but be honest in deals and quality. I try. I try a lot. Um, I will not sell a machine unless it's 100% working. I sit here and play it for hours to make sure there's no issues. You know, changing paper, taking the cash box in and out, resetting the bill validator, all that stuff I do over and over and over again to make sure that when the machine actually arrives, that that's the way it's going to work. Now, I mean, these things get shipped for via freight and they you know, they are not meant to be bumping up and down in the, in the back of an 18 wheeler. Um, so some things do get loose and that's why I always tell everybody that buys a machine for me, when you get it home and plug it in and it's not working, don't freak out. Um, because nine times out of 10, something just got loose and I can walk you through it on the phone very easily. And, uh, I've never had an issue. So I've had issues with machines, you know, parts coming loose, but never had an issue with talking to somebody threw it on the phone. Pinball is great, but the bonus is so hard to get. Yeah, we uh, looked at the uh, the IGT branding guide, I guess uh, a couple of live streams ago. And yeah, it was like one in 60 frequency to hit the bonus on pinball, where top dollar is about one in 41. So it's much harder to get for sure. And of course, one of my favorite games, five real top dollar is horrible for the bonus, but still love it. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty volatile one. So... All right, just scrolling down, looking for questions here. All right. All right, so Matt D asks, how often do the casinos sell their machines when they take them off the floor? It really depends. Um, basically, once they take them off the floor, they go into a warehouse, and then there's a bidding war. Um, and again, only certain dealers, uh, you have to be registered in order to buy directly from a casino. I cannot buy directly from a casino, but I can buy from dealers that buy from casinos. Um, and they basically sit on a warehouse until somebody offers them. They basically send out the lists to these dealers and say, you know, a request for proposal almost. It's like a request for bid. And how much will you pay us for all these? And whoever ends up paying them the most, <laughs> we'll usually get them. And there's a couple dealers that seem to always get the good machines. Um, it's a, it's a bidding war. It's just like buying um, impounded cars and stuff that are on the, the auction lot. It's the same type of thing. Um, but some, sometimes uh, they keep them in warehouses for a very long time. I talked to somebody, uh, one of the slot techs at New York, New York once, and he told me that they have a warehouse almost the size of New York, New York casino filled with machines and they're not doing anything with them. And I was like, can I go in there and look around and buy some? And he's like, I don't think that's possible, but <laughs> uh, so sometimes they just hold on to him. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's a casino. It's a casino decision. You know how long they keep them. What part of Texas are you? And I'm in central Texas. That's about as close as I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, 
All right, Deb C, my state allows over 30 years old. What and how can I know what machines that would include? Um, that's very difficult. I think the only ones you're going to be able to get are the old mechanical ones. Uh, nothing that you see in the casino or have seen in the casino for a while. Um, but, you know, um, what I would recommend, Deb, is go go check out Slot Machines Unlimited and ask them. They may be able to work something out. Um some states, even though they say that they won't allow it 30 years or old, um, they actually have some additional rules that you won't find on that page that I mentioned before where they can take out the bill validator, um, which is what allows to, to accept currency, and then it will be um, legal for you to own. So go reach out to them. Um, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just I know Chris, and I know he'll get, take good care of you, so... Alex says, so what might the price range be for a standard old school three-row slot machine? Um, from uh, Slot Machines Unlimited, if you need full warranty and, and support and all that kind of stuff, they start around $800 uh, plus shipping. And I think he charges about $350 for shipping. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, but if you are willing to take a risk and you want to kind of dabble with it yourself, uh, check out Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist in your local area. Uh, you might find some people that are just selling machines because they're, they're broken and they don't know what to do with them. You can get some really inexpensive machines that way. Um, and I'm willing to help you, you know, figure out what, what needs to happen, but it's a risk to do that. I want to make that clear um, before you do something like that, make sure that you're willing to take that risk and understand that you may need to purchase parts and get it working. Um, and that may be easy. It may not be easy. I will say just from personal experience, a lot of the ones that I see posted around here are very simple problems to fix. The battery went low. Um, a battery costs less than $5 and it's very cheap and it, it's very cheap, but it's also very easy to swap out. Um, sometimes they just need to be cleared. Um, that's also a very cheap thing and very easy process to do. Um, so just keep that in mind. It is risky, but you never know. And uh, another RNG question here from Jeremy Tablet. So before the play bet button is hit, is the RNG running in the background generating random numbers that are not being used or only when the buttons are hit, then the RNG generates one number? So the RNG is constantly running. As soon as the CPU box uh, receives power, it is generating RNGs constantly, uh, multi, multi thousands of times a second, uh, too fast for you to even real, realize. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's constantly running um, the RNG. And like I said before, when you hit that the bet button where you pull the handle or whatever it is that's triggering a spin, um, it stops at RNG, whatever it was, you know, you just imagine a bunch of numbers cycling through and then it just stops and it picks that number out. And then it goes, looks at the pay table and sees if that's a win or not. So, yeah, it is constantly running. And uh, Gamble the Globe, good advice here. It's, it's just one or zero, one wins and zero loses. The rest is complicated math, but it is instant when you hit the button. Yeah, it's instant when you hit the button. It's a little bit more complicated than a win or a loss, but it's, it's, I do have a video about that. Um, I think I did it about two months ago, how the random number generator works. Um, and how it keeps in balance with the uh, payback percentage. So go watch that video. Um, if Gamble the Globe or somebody, Tammy, if you can find it and put that link, um, I'll accept it. All right, Bullion Bear says, Hey, Mark, I have a double red, white, and blue in Game King with a bunch of bulbs burned out, mostly on the buttons. How do I determine the platform, such as S2000, etc., to order parts? Also want to install a ticket in. Um if you could send me, I'd, I'd have to, a picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> so if you could email me a picture of it, um, I will tell you instantly what you need and even give you the link of what to buy. So uh, just take a picture and email me at homeslotsfun at gmail.com and uh, I will get that for you for sure. It's kind of hard sometimes to tell the difference between an S plus and an S2000 um, because there, there's variations. Uh, the S plus never has backlit reels usually has coins, um, may or may not have a bill validator, where S2000s usually have backlit reels, although not always. Um, they usually do not have coins, and they always have a bill validator. So, But a picture is worth a thousand words, and I'll be able to help you with that. So, 
Okay. Question, not ownership. And by the way, if you have any question about slot machines, uh, gambling, casinos or anything, feel free to ask. Um, you don't have to stay on topic. Uh, I'm not turning anybody away with questions. All right. So AT, not ownership, but related to playing at home. Is the Apple app for top dollar play called Wild Classic Slots Casino at Home specifically? I think I'm seeing the right one. I'll email you pics if needed. Um, let's see. Where is my phone? I don't know where my phone is, but I, I think that's what it's called. Um, the game itself, it's probably within a pack of a bunch of different casino slot games, but the one is called Top Money. So you may try searching on that um, and see if that's it. But yeah, you can email me a pic too if you need to. That's fine. I would, I would love to go to that warehouse. I'm going to keep asking them until they tell me they can, or at least show me a list. I want to see what they have. <laughs> so. And Kyle says slot machines unlimited is only about 30 minutes from me. That's good. If um, yeah, they are located in Ohio for sure. I think tip city for sure. Yeah. So you could save on shipping. Uh, definitely go check them out. They've got a big warehouse of stuff. So, and Rick uh, confirmed that. So, All right. And uh, there's the there's the link. Thank you so much, uh, Game of the Globe. I appreciate it. All right. So, Jeremy, for different denominations in one machine, it's, it's equivalent to different machines, but these denoms are still sharing one RNG, correct? Meaning that a certain RNG num when hit will appear in all denom right. Okay. So let me, let me try to explain this. So the random number generator is the most basic operation of a CPU inside of a slot machine. Um, it doesn't know, it doesn't have anything to do with the nomination that you pick, the game that is actually running, um, the bet amount or anything. Just think of it as a bunch of numbers that are just constantly running. What is unique to the game and the denomination is the pay table. So again, that's the video that, that we've been talking about that Game of the Globe linked to. But basically what happens is, let's say that you're playing $1 um, double diamond and you hit the bet, bat, you know, the spin button or the bet max, pull the handle, whatever. Uh, whenever that happens, um, the random number generator stops, and then it says, okay, let's go look at the game table for the playback percentage and the game type. And did the number that was picked by the random number generator fall within any of these ranges? And if so, what was that win amount, or is it a loss? Um, in that video, I tried to explain it because I actually just I built a slot machine from scratch um, and tried to show you how the lookup works. Um, but the random number generator is completely separate from everything. It's just constantly running. And that is what will trigger it to then look up what the actual win or the loss is based on the game and denomination. But every denomination or game type has a different pay table associated with it. Um, and that, and also what's factored into that is the payback percentage. So it's a very complicated thing to describe. Um, but I, I try to do my best with that. And that video, um, let me get this banner off of here. So that, that video was my best attempt to do that. And I always want to reference back to that because it's so hard to just sit in. Even if somebody came up to me in person and asked me to explain it, I'd have to sit down and draw it out for them. Cause it's, it's, it's simple, but it's complicated. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So, all right. So Kevin says, I have an S plus S2000 BB one and a Bally mechanical. Awesome. Fun to tinker with. I switched out games and glass. Being able to open the machine up with a key is a power trip. <laughs> High freight usually kills the deal for me. Yeah. Um, but, but fortunately freight is coming down. Gas prices are coming down. So freight is starting to see a decline again. Uh, which is good for me because I can sell these machines for a little bit cheaper. Um, I, I got to tell you probably three, let's see, two or three years ago, I was paying uh, no more than 300, 325 uh, for white glove service. Meaning they came in with a, uh, they came in with a dolly, picked up the machine, wrapped it themselves and delivered it to a room of the, the customer's choice. Um, Six months ago, that same process was $950. It was ridiculous. And so all of my sales just stopped um, because nobody rightfully did not want to pay for the, the, sh the shipping cost for that. And it's, I tell everybody, just wait, you know, just wait a little while. Um, they will get better. Now I'm being quoted around 450. So it's starting to come down, which is good. And uh, that's, that's, 
the nature of the business, unfortunately. Freight shipping is a big question mark. Um, I sometimes sell machines at a loss or sometimes just break even in order just to move inventory because I feel bad for people that are paying so much for shipping. I don't do that often, but you know, I will make it up later other ways. And so, you know, that's just, that's what I do and that's how I handle it. So, all right. I, I says, thank you. Any suggestion on a Liberty seven machine? I am not familiar with Liberty seven machine. If I saw a picture of it, I'd probably know. Let me look real quick. Yeah, I can't say that I've seen this one before, so I can't really uh, advise on it. What's your specific question on it? Maybe it's something general. All right, Matt D says, how often do you get some of the more popular machines like Top Dollar, Pinball, etc.? cetera? Um, well, I had a dealer that I was able to get Top Dollars pretty frequently, but um, we have parted ways. <laughs> um, well, I had a deal for about four top dollar machines and um, I, I'm not going to mention who they were because I never mentioned the dealer's names or anything like that, but it was, it was a bad, very bad experience and I had to pull out and get my money back. But I did find a new dealer um, in Ohio who I've purchased machines from in the past a long time ago. And he recently was able to get a bunch of bar crest machines in, which are these top dollars. And so I bought four of them uh, from him and, um, but they needed some love, um, some pretty bad parts in there. <laughs> um, so it's, it's hard to say. Um, and I always say when I do get the top dollars in, if you want them, hurry up and buy them. Not because I'm a sales guy and I'm trying to be pushy. I just don't know when I'm going to get more in. Um, casinos are buying these back and putting them in their high limit rooms and that makes it very difficult for people like me to get them because dealers will sell right back to the casino for much more than they will get out of me. So that's that's kind of the problem I'm working with right now. Um, top dollar is a lot easier to find now than pinball. Um, I have only had, in the five years I've been doing this, only one pinball machine come through here, and it was a S plus. It was the old coin version. And um, I'm still mad at selling. I keep... I keep uh, texting the guy asking if I can buy it back from him, but he, he won't do it. I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. But uh, yeah, pinball is really difficult. Um, the dealer that brought these down to me, um, he told me that he sells the pinballs back to uh, casinos for 10,000. And that's, I mean, that's just way too much money. That's stupid money. <laughs> so yeah, freight is crazy right now for sure. Yeah. It's getting better. It's getting better, which is good. I mean, that's, that's important, right? All right. So I always find it amusing that a lot of games in the casinos share the same winning tunes. For example, I played six different games and they all play the same music whenever I win something. Why well, same? Uh, it's just, I hate it when they do that, but you know, it's, it's, if you think about it, you have different manufacturers. The, the manufacturers don't share the tunes, but uh, IGT has their own say jackpot music and they reuse it on a lot of different machines. Um, the winning tones, um, you know, aristocrat has a very unique one that you probably recognize instantly if you heard it. Um, laziness, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's laziness, but I think also they probably want it to sound the same so that people are drawn into it and start to recognize, excuse me, start to recognize it. Um, so there's probably some marketing decisions being made there, but I, I personally like it when they put the effort into making things a lot different. And IGT sure does that. They put a lot of effort into their machines. Um, like top dollar, like let's compare top dollar to easy money. For example, it's, ex it's essentially the same exact gameplay, but I just do not like easy money. Um, I've had the option to buy several of those and I just won't do it. Um, and it, I think it's because of the music, the, the top dollar, the announcer, the, the voice that they use, the music, it's the 90s cheesy music. It's everything about it is just so perfect. Um, and it just it's iconic. And so Easy Money tried to replicate it and they did some other kind of music and sounds and everything. And it just didn't take off. And so that does it plays a part in it, in my opinion. I think it, you know, it can it can make or break a game you know, just the sound. It's like, it's like going to a casino and playing a machine that has no sound at all. 
I can't stand that. It's so boring. <laughs> the sound and the music and the experience and the lights is part of the fun. So there you go. And Josh says, do you buy your machines from, I, I used to, um, I did buy, if you remember the top dollars that I had in here before the real tall ones, um, which are like the newer versions. Um, I went in with a friend and bought a bunch of those. Um, I have no problems with buying from him, but he's, he is more focused to selling to you guys like the consumer where I'm more looking for dealer pricing because I can accept machines that are broken and most of the time they are broken when they get here and I need to fix them. Um, so I get a little cheaper pricing because of that. But plus I also buy in bulk. So, you know, that's different where he's more of not selling as a dealer. He's more selling to the public, which is, which is good. We need that. We need that. He has a support team and the um, parts <laughs> to fix anything um, and to sell anything. So that's good. It's good we have people like that. And Gary says, I have a double red, white, and blue IGT serial number. How much to put a hopper in it? So I'm assuming you have an S2000. It is quite the process to convert um, to a hopper. I did it once, and I wish I would have filmed it because now I wish I had a reference. There is a good guide on newlifegames.com. Um, if you search for hopper upgrade or convert to hopper, you will probably find the same list that I originally went off of, but just be prepared. You're going to need a lot of parts. Um, some of them are expensive. Hoppers are very heavy. The shipping on those is between 40 and 60 bucks alone. Um, it's not really worth it. In my opinion, I think it's better to find a machine that already has uh, coins um, already in play. It's just, it's a, it's not an easy process. I'm just going to say that you, it's, it can do, it can be done, but it's not an easy process. Um, especially if you've never worked on a slot machine before, you're probably going to get frustrated and wish you never, would <laughs> never got into it, but um, it's possible. And uh, silver queen says stupid question. There are no stupid questions. You know, please don't say that. Would it hurt a machine to transport a machine on its back? Thinking of trading my machine for a new one, it would have to be, you could do it on its back. Um, this <laughs> I've heard the same thing before I've shipped everything on my, on the back. I put them in the back of my minivan when I own that never had an issue. My only recommendation is if it does have reels, um, take the reels out, um, before you transport it. Um, because the reels are very sensitive and when they're just sitting on their side like that and they start to bounce, they become misaligned. Um, and then you have crooked reels and things like that. And they're hard, hard to bend them back into shape. So, uh, take the reels out, lay it on its back. It'll be fine. I have no issues. Now watch you do that and something will happen. And then you'll blame me. So, <laughs> um, you know what? I'm, I'm starting to think that I might do this just, just for the sake of getting a video together. Um, because there isn't a video about converting uh, to coins. And I, I'm still shooting myself for not doing it a long time ago when I did a conversion for a customer. Uh, so I might do that on one of these just for fun. And I'll video the whole thing. Um, show you kind of what, what you need to buy and all that kind of stuff. So, And Josh says, how do I upgrade my IGT G23 Family 14 to a Family 20? Um, I'm not sure if that's, I think it's possible. I think it's more than the OS. I remember you asking this question. I don't think we were able to get to you on a Cowboy uh, Slots live stream. Uh, Josh, could you email me um, and I will do the research, research for you. Um, I do. Mine is family 14 and the OS files that I have are all family 14. I don't think I have any family 20, but I will look and see what the process is. And worst case, I'll ask somebody that I know knows a lot about um, the G23 platform. So uh, shoot me an email, homeslotsfun at gmail.com and I'll, I will uh, do that. So. Do you ever deal with AVP machines? Yes, I do. Um, in fact, I just got rid of the last one <laughs> that I had. Um, uh, the top dollars I had were all AVP machines, and I have sold probably six of them now. Um, no, more than that, because I sold eight, uh, six of the top dollars, but I've had three different AVPs. Um, I have an AVP that's sitting in storage right now that's mostly just been a parts machine. 
Um, and I have one in my garage right here now that I think about it. I have an AVP machine, but I'm just not, I'm not a fan of them. Honestly, the only ones that I like are the G20s and the G23s. Um, but the SAVP and the SMLDs, they're just, they are difficult machines to work on. They have overheating issues. Um, it's very tight. I get bruises and cuts all over the place when I try to work on those machines. It's just, I prefer not to deal with them anymore, but I do, I have worked on many of them before. If you do have a question about anything with an AVP machine, I can, I can definitely answer it though. So, and I would pay someone to install the hopper. I just love my machine. <laughs> Good. Uh, what, which type of machine was it? Is a red, white, and blue something red, white, and blue. Okay. Yeah, basically, uh, here's the gist of what you need. Um, you need the hopper. Uh, you need the coin comparator. Um, you need the coin comparator um, bracket that fixes to the side of the machine. You need the coin head, which is the little thing at the top where you put the slide the coins in. Um, and the hopper, um, the hopper is unique to the size of the coin. So if you're trying to do dollar coins, you need to get the dollar coin hopper or quarter coins, you need to get that style hopper. Um, let's see what else you need. You need to make sure that the, the S2000 has the wiring for it. Uh, most do, but believe me, some of them, I open these things up and they cut them for some reason, and that makes it more difficult. Um, let's see what else. Hopper, you need the coin tray at the bottom because some just have the little flat, and so you need the coin tray for the coins to fall into. Uh, let's see, what else do you need? I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, it's easy to find the parts; they're just expensive, and it's kind of a it's a hard process. So, uh, depending on where you're located, I could come do it. But I I imagine you're not anywhere near Central Texas, so <laughs> always got to ask that. All right, we got about nine minutes left. So, any last minute questions here, and then I am off to server migration land. I've got, um, some work to do tonight. So thank you guys for joining. I uh, always appreciate it. And uh, of course, next week we'll have uh, Brantley back on and we'll pick another topic, uh, slot machine related. But, uh, if you have any tech questions about, uh, slot machines or anything in general, um, I'm happy to happy to answer anything as, as we wrap things up here. So yeah, California. Yeah. That's a little bit too far for me. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, server, server migration time. Always fun. Easy to find the parts. Hard to find the hopper parts for coin denom you want to use. Yeah. Yeah, I know you recently went through that, I think. Um, that's, that's the key. That's the trick. Um, I would always start with the hopper and just find a hopper that you can find. And then that's the coins you're going to go with. So, <laughs> you know, it's getting harder and harder to find those parts. Uh, it's, it's rough. It's rough to do conversions. So, and Wax147 says, what do you think about Winstar Choctaw payback percentage? Uh, I have no idea. Um, and we don't know because they do not publish their return to player statistics. So we have no idea what the payback percentage is set to. Um, but they are class two facilities, uh, which mean they're bingo style um, server based games. So um, I think that adds to the the problems of playing uh, machines there. Uh, my wife and I stopped at uh, Choctaw on the way back and it wasn't so good. <laughs> we did have some wins, but it 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 just it doesn't feel it doesn't feel right. Um, so we had we really don't know what their payback percentage is set to. And server-based games means that they can change it anytime they want to. And it, it's, it's. I am not a class two expert, um, but it's, it's. You're basically playing bingo against everybody else in the casino, and it's. Just, I just don't recommend it personally. If you can go to a class three facility that is not um, bingo style and is run by the state, so you can see the return to player statistics, those are the ones that I always recommend you go to. So. And then Jeremy says, machines connected in a progressive network, do they update a server that keeps track of the total progressive? Yes. In fact, I have one sitting right here. Uh, so this is this is my progressive controller for um, Flintstones, I believe. 
Yeah, Flintstones. Um, so they have a network on the back, and so they basically network a bunch of machines together to this box, and this box keeps track of the progressive. Even when the machine is powered off, if the machine is, um, is cleared and reset, all of that stuff, the progressive still stays the same, and that's required um, for linked progressives. Uh, so that's what these boxes are made for. They're probably newer ones now, but this is basically a little Dell box. <laughs> it's a server. So there you go. Good question. All right. All right. Yep. Half dollar corn and hopper parts was hard to find. Stay with 25 cents. Yeah. The one, the last, the conversion I did was nickels. <laughs> That's, that shows you the last time I found a hopper. So. There are a lot of class three machines in talking about. They might be. Um, just because they're not showing a bingo card does not mean that they are um, class three, but I don't know for sure. So you could be right. We have server-based class three machines in our casinos in Washington state. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, Washington's different because I think it's based on what the lottery system or something. There's something unique about Washington. I'm not familiar with it, but yeah. Yeah, there you go, Gamble Globe. That's uh that's what they use. That's what they use. Progressive boxes. Interesting, huh? <laughs> Funny have you uh, you've noticed those before, so and Matt, thanks so much for your live stream and what you do. Very exciting stuff. I appreciate it. I know this is a little boring sometimes. <laughs> uh, slot tech uh, stuff is not exciting. It's not for everybody, but uh, I enjoy it. And I'm glad you guys do as well. And yours is 25 cents. So, yeah, you should be able to, if you, if you do want to look for a hopper, you're probably in good shape to find uh, a 25 cent one. So. And CJG says, thanks for all your info. All right. So uh, I'll take a couple more questions if they come in while I wrap up here. But again, thank you everybody for joining. Uh, I'm glad to be back. I've got uh, more videos to work on. Um, they, let's see, um, Tyler, if you're out there, um, I just finished his top dollar. He's buying this uh, very beautiful gold uh, top dollar. And um, I put the LED bulbs in it, so it looks very bright. The The reels just pop off the screen. It looks really good. Um, and then I also, he is going to be converting this one to coins, actually. So maybe I can talk him into filling it. I don't know. <laughs> but he's going to be converting that one to coins. So I made sure the hopper plate and everything is in there, ready to go. Um, and then I think that was it. Uh, just needed to clean that one up a little bit, and it's good to go. Uh, the Money Mad Martians needed a lot of work. Um the ticket printer was not working um, and I found out it was just unplugged. So I got that plugged in and it's confirmed working now. Um, it had the very old bill validator in it, which is the ones that just you push in, you put the bill in and it just makes a loud crunching noise and takes like five minutes for the bill to come in. <laughs> um, they're, they're the WBA, I think it's called. They're, they're horrible. Um, so um, as part of the sale, I wanted to replace it with the newer uh, MEI cash flow, which is like the yellow bill heads. And so I had to take the harness out of this one and put it in that one. And that was quite the process. Um, I didn't film any of that. Um, unfortunately, um, it was a lot of stuff of me laying down, trying to get it screws and sockets. And it just wasn't very interesting to watch. <laughs> um, but there are still some things I need to do on that machine. I'm going to be swapping out the board. Um, and doing some other things. So I am going to film that and uh, start doing some more filming for you guys. So, all right, let's see. A couple more questions and I will sign off for today. I think some of the machines at Choctaw and Windstar are class three with top dollar and easy money and some of the others. Yeah, you could be right. I, I really don't know. Uh, it is it is definitely possible for them to have a mix. Um, that is that is definitely possible for sure. Yeah, that's my top dollar tile. Well, I'm sorry he beat you to the punch. <laughs> I do have another one I'll be selling, but I've, I've got to get parts for it. So, 
um, have extra LED bulbs for S2K conversion. Yeah, I've got plenty, but I will also show you where I order these. I order them on eBay. They're actually for automotive use, but they are super bright. And uh, somebody tipped me off to using these a long time ago, and I've used them ever since. So uh, just hit me up in Discord, and I'll uh, send you the link to those. Hopefully, they still have some available because I bought like 50 of them a couple weeks ago. All right. Uh, they have ultra video poker. Those can't be class two, can they? Yeah, that's right. They can't be. Um, those have to be based off of uh, uh, rules of those games. So, um, so that kind of confirms that, that they are a mix, class two and class three. So, can I search for a hopper by a serial number on my machine? No. Um, if you uh, here, I'm I'm willing to help help you find the parts, Gary, if you could just send me an email at home slots, fun at gmail.com, send me a picture of your machine, um, the front of it, and then also open the door and send me a picture of the inside. And I can get you a parts list of everything that you would need. Um, and then it's, you're kind of on your own. Cause I, I, I will do a video on it, but it's, it's not something that I can really help easily because I don't remember the process and I need to get more familiar with it again. Um, before I start <laughs> jumping on the phone or something like that to try to help you out. But, um, all right, we are at the hour mark and I need to go do a server. Oh, server time, server time. It'll be easy. It'll go good. I can sleep tonight. So, all right, guys, thank you so much, um, for joining today. I really appreciate all the questions and everything. hope I can help you. If you, if you ended up uh, deciding to buy a machine and that's what you want to do, um, you have somebody here. I am willing to help you as much as I can. I uh, don't want you to feel like you're going at it alone. Um, it's a lot of fun. They can be a great investment. Um, there's a lot of things you can do at home to have fun without having to spend money. Um, it's perfect for a game room. I've seen people put them in their kitchen before. So <laughs> people do what they're going to do. So, all right. Thank you so much, everybody again. And uh, we will see you on the next video. Uh, make sure, um, you subscribe and like and all that fun stuff. I hate asking that, but I got to force myself to say that. Um, I feel like everybody should know that by now, but they say you should say it. So I'm going to say it. Please subscribe and please like if you enjoyed this stuff. And then also make sure to tune in to Cowboy Slots on Sunday. Um, we will be doing our regular live show over there as well. And we will be doing a bunch of questions and answers of just general stuff there. So, all right, guys, take it easy. And we will see you on the next video. All right, bye-bye. Have a good night.